Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, where each episode is dedicated to exploring a crucial aspect of our communities, small businesses. I'm your host, SK. Small businesses are more than just commercial entities. They are the lifeblood of local economies, innovators of unique services, and the drivers of job creation. Their importance is fueling economic growth and fostering community spirit cannot be overstated. In today's episode, we are diving into the transformative world of technology and its impact on small businesses. Our focus will be on understanding how emerging technologies, especially AI and digital tools, are reshaping the landscape for small and medium-sized businesses. We will explore the challenges and opportunities these technologies present and how small businesses can leverage them to drive innovation, efficiency and growth. Today, we are joined by Kree Govinder from Microsoft Canada. Kree Govinda is a dynamic senior sales leader known for delivering high-impact results and fostering high-performance sales teams. His expertise in sales strategy, market development, and partner enablement has been a cornerstone of his success. With a strong focus on customer engagement, Kree's approach to sales emphasizes market ownership and results-driven leadership. His passion for people and ethical leadership is deeply embedded in his professional ethos as he creates cultures of performance, collaboration, and excellence. Drawing inspiration from J. Donald Walter's view of leadership as an opportunity to serve, Cree exemplifies a leadership style that is both inspiring and impactful. Recently moving from South Africa to Canada with Microsoft, Cree's journey is a testament to the company's commitment to diversity and inclusion. Welcome, Cree. How are you doing today? Uh, very well, thanks. And you, SK? I'm doing very fine. Thank you for asking. Uh, it's truly a pleasure to have you with us. You know, you, you're known as a dynamic leader in sales, celebrated for your exceptional results uh, and skill for uh, in fostering high-performing teams. Uh, Kree, your journey from South Africa to Canada with Microsoft is a powerful testament to the value of diversity and inclusion in the corporate world. Your career is a beacon of inspiration for many and it's not just the positions you have held but also the journey and the motivations behind them that integrate us. Could you take us back to the beginning? What sparked your passion for sales and leadership? Well, wonderful question. Leadership really started off for me on the sports field. Very early in my career, I found myself uh, infused into a number of sports, particularly volleyball. And it's on that court that I realized the power of being a leader, creating a vision for people and helping them achieve that. That naturally translated as I got further on in my career and I moved into technology, uh, working with teams. And I had a wonderful opportunity very early on in my career to work for Lotus. And there I got to witness what it was like to have a very dynamic leader that could paint a vision and create a roadmap to enable the people to rally behind that and realize that value. From that point on, I became a student of the game. I still am a student of the game, and I subscribe to the leadership philosophy of servitude. Uh, it's best encapsulated by Walter Donaldson, who said, leadership is an opportunity to serve. It is not a trumpet call to self-importance. So whether it's in my personal life or even my professional life, I always lead with this aspect of servitude and aiming to teach. Uh, it's truly really inspiring to hear about the passion and principles that have guided you from the start. Kree, the way you have navigated your career emphasizes uh, ethical leadership and a deep commitment to excellence clearly reflects in how uh, your approach challenging and innovating. Uh, before we dive deeper into our conversation with Kree, I want to take a moment to acknowledge all of you joining us today. Your curiosity and eagerness to learn alongside us are what makes this discussion so meaningful. We are about to explore some fascinating topics that are at the forefront of business and technology. Whether you are a professional in the field, a student or simply someone fascinated by the impact of technology on our world, there is something in this conversation for you. So let's get ready to uncover some insightful perspective together. Agree, everyone knows technology is not just evolving. It's revolutionizing the way we do business. At the heart of this transformation is generative AI, a tool becoming indispensable for businesses aiming to stay ahead. Agree, with the rise of generative AI, how do you foresee it's transforming the operations and competitive landscape for small and medium enterprises? Generative AI right now is so easily accessible to everyone. This aspect of cost first and foremost is really taken off the table to a large degree. Whether it's a paid for Microsoft Copilot subscription that starts at $30 per user per month, uh, which is less than the cost of a cup of coffee per day, 
or whether it's a paid for implementation of OpenAI's chat GPT. These are readily available in very secure environments. What this enables organizations SMBs in particular, and allows them to become ultra competitive, is it enhances productivity on multiple levels, from generating of emails in professional formats, summarizing large amounts of text, creation of chatbots, uh, marketing campaigns, and even very slick PowerPoint presentations or images. All of this can be done with generative AI today in terms of the Copilot stack and some of the technologies that I've mentioned, readily available to our SMBs. The time saving that they generate out of that, the creativity boost that they get in terms of their employees is phenomenal. Uh, that's compelling perspective on the transformative power of uh, generative AI CRE. Given these significant changes, uh, could you share a specific example of how a small or medium-sized business has integrated generative AI into their operations? So there's been a very interesting uh, set of use cases that we come across, and we often marvel at the creativity of our partners and our users in terms of how they take the platforms that we provide as Microsoft and then turn them into real-life value propositions. One that came across the other day was uh, a chatbot that was generated and you simply go into Copilot Studio, which is also available through our product offering. You create a chatbot within there, you point it at a URL and within three to five minutes, you have a chatbot that stood up that you can launch on your website. So I interesting. Actually, yeah, I actually did one for Canadian SME that I'll share with you later on today. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm eager to see that. Yeah. Yes. So, and, and it's solutions like that that are absolutely fantastic, right? It allows you to go and do things at speed in a very professional manner. And it even has the ability in this chatbot to hand off to a live agent at some point in time. So that takes all of three to five minutes and you're able to infuse that into your website and create a completely different channel of engagement for your users. If you have to think about SMBs today, if you just have to close your eyes and think about that as a technology challenge as it exists today in the absence of having that technology, it would involve going out, finding professional services, designing it, paying for it, and getting it implemented. It involves a lot of efforts, a lot of time-consuming uh, things that you need to take care of. There is no generative AI that exists right now. Absolutely. Right. Isn't it incredible to see generative AI not just a buzzword, but as a real game changer for businesses, especially the smaller ones? It's like watching a sci-fi novel come to life, transforming our operations and competitive strategies. I can't help but think about the endless possibilities this open up for your own projects or businesses. Have any one of you started exploring generative AI in your work? Share your stories or thought with us. No, uh, in the arena of AI, Microsoft stands as a titan. Thanks to its pioneering efforts and strategic collaborations such as the one with OpenAI. Kree, your first-hand experience with these initiatives gives us a unique viewpoint on this matter. Could you shed light on the company's outlook on generative AI and its influence on your partnership with OpenAI? Hmm. So we've done a number of studies and what we've seen is that generative AI and AI-based technologies will contribute about 10% to the world's GDP. 10% doesn't really sound like an awful lot until you quantify that. And that's $10 trillion of GDP that we do not have today. That's the equivalent of three new Microsofts. Right. It's massive. It's massive, right? Right. And so we look at this and this moment as a true inflection point. It's one of those disrupt to be disrupted moments. And I know that there are many of you that are out there that look at this and say, is this just another hype cycle? Is this just another technology? Will this dissolve into Gartner's trough of disillusionment? And understandably so. But here's the thing. Generative AI is here to change everything. It is as large as the internet, if not larger. Why? Because we have cloud beneath us today. We have the internet beneath us today. We have mobile beneath us today. We have search beneath us today. Those big components all give a boost to this technology, which is generative AI. It's a Promethean moment and one that cannot be missed. 
And as Microsoft, that's the way that we're viewing it. And I say this with the utmost humility. We had our earnings call yesterday and the increase in terms of our stock and what the market is saying to us is that we're on the right trajectory. And our first mover advantage as Microsoft bestows to our partners and our customers is their first mover advantage. And that's a wonderful thing to be able to give back to the world. When it comes to the question around our partnership with OpenAI, many people look at this and they say, how did this happen so quickly? And the truth of the matter is it didn't. Chat GPT, when it was launched, was the fastest adopted technology that the human race has ever seen three times faster than the previously fastest adopted technology being TikTok, right? So it's amazing to see just how quickly it's proliferated. Our partnership with OpenAI, not many know this, but it spans back to seven years ago, right? So it's not in its infancy. It's been around for some time. OpenAI at that point in time were looking for a cloud provider that would match their ambitions and provide a technology platform and expertise that would help them to evolve their product. And it's through this co-creation that we sit where we are today with technologies such as ChatGPT4 and the Microsoft Copilot stack that are now generally available to the public. So the relationship has had a few years behind it in terms of its making, and it's ultimately only getting stronger the further on we go. Uh, your insights into Microsoft's strategic vision on generative AI are quite enlightening. Building on that, how does Microsoft envision striking a balance between the envelope in innovation and ensuring that these advanced AI tools remain accessible and uh, secure for users? Mm -hmm. That's a fantastic question. I want to start off by saying something, which is that unequivocally, Microsoft runs on trust. Everything that we do starts off with a security first mindset and design philosophy. There are millions of customers across the world that entrust Microsoft every second of every day with their critical information. And that is a responsibility that we handle with the utmost care, respect, and a high degree of responsibility. So with that said, security underpins pretty much everything that we do, security and compliance, right? So when it comes to innovation, yes, we want to move fast and we want to innovate, but we will never release something that's not been hardened and tested, and we will never compromise on innovation in light of security. It's always security first. The beauty about what we have released is that the Copilot stack takes advantage of the security protocols that are pervasive in all our products. So there's nothing new that needs to be done. There is no new security implementation. And that's an advancement in terms of innovation as well. Seamless integration and leveraging of the investments that you've made are cornerstones of our design principles. Right, and where there is micro, when you see the brand name Microsoft is associated, so there, it's secure by default, right? The strides Microsoft is making with generative AI are not just about technology. They are about shaping a future where innovation serves everyone. It's a delicate dance between pushing boundaries and ensuring technology remains a tool for empowerment. It makes me wonder how we, in our everyday interactions with technology, perceive and influenced by such advancements. What's your take on finding this balance in your use of technology? Let's discuss how we envision the future of tech in our lives. The launch of Microsoft Copilot has been a game changer in the AI-driven uh, productivity tools, offering unprecedented support to businesses. Kree, your understanding of its application, especially in SMEs, could you provide critical insights into the real-world impact what tangible impacts do you anticipate this tool will have on business efficiency and productivity, particularly for SMEs? So we've done extensive studies and granted, you know, the technologies are, are pretty new and we've had early adopter programs for a select bunch of customers. And now it's generally available to pretty much everybody. Here's what some of the studies have shown us. Number one, 70% of users have indicated that they're able to complete their tasks faster. 68% of them say that it's improved the quality of the work that they're producing. 
users have reported that they're four times faster at catching up on missed meetings and emails, and a staggering percentage of 77% of users have indicated that once they've had Copilot, they won't give it up, right? So the productivity gains, especially for small organizations that have a clutch of people that they rely on for a multitude of functions, becomes something that transforms their universe irrevocably. It allows them to focus on what's business critical for them and really the tasks that matter, knowing that they have a powerful co-pilot alongside them to take care of some of those more repetitive or mundane tasks and really sometimes even give them a creativity boost when they need it. For me personally, sharing my experiences with using the technology, where I've found the most use is in teams. Whether I've joined a meeting late or I'm unable to attend a meeting, the ability for Copilot to recap and catch me up is phenomenal. In meetings, I'm typically taking down a lot of notes, but what that does is it disconnects me from the conversation at hand. Having Copilot and trusting in the technology, knowing that it's there alongside me, allows me to stay present and be available to the discussion. And then I am able to leverage the tool on the side to do things like ask questions such as, who hasn't had a voice in this meeting? And then in the aspects of inclusion, go around the room and ensure that other voices are heard. Also allows me to do other things such as, have we resolved all of the actions in this meeting? And I get a great response from Copilot that allows me to move the meeting forward. And the final piece that I love is at the end of the meeting, it's able to summarize the notes for me as well as the action items. Oh my God, <laughs> like uh, it's had so much of potential, right? And the potential of Microsoft Copilot to revolutionize business efficiency is clear from your explanation, Gri. Could you perhaps share a success story or a case study where Copilot has made a significant impact on a small or medium enterprise operations or outcomes? Yeah, so as I had mentioned earlier, there are a number of interesting use cases that we see our uh, partners and our customers standing up in terms of the way that they're leveraging uh, Copilot, especially Copilot Studio. And one that really does pop to mind is around campaign generation. Uh, it's a need for pretty much every organization creating content and delivering campaigns so that they stimulate demand for their organizations. And that's one that I've seen where from designing of the graphics where you don't necessarily need to go and find a third-party graphic design organization going into Microsoft Designer with a few prompts, being able to generate uh, AI images, number one, then heading off into PowerPoint and generating really rich content through some generative AI prompts. And then finally, packaging that all together in terms of a mailer that may then go out as part of a campaign. Seeing the real-world impact of Microsoft Copilot on SMEs is like getting a glimpse into the future of work, where AI partners with human integrity into elevate productivity. It's inspiring and making me think about the other potential AI applications in our professional or personal lives. Have you experienced the transformational impact of AI tools in your work or daily routines? I would love to hear how technology has made a difference for you. Now, Kri, your leadership has not only propelled uh, you know, teams to success, but also skillfully merge human talent with AI capabilities. This blend is crucial in today's tech landscape and your strategies here are of great interest. How do you utilize generative AI to enhance team performance and achieve business goals? So the first one is around inclusion for me. You know, Microsoft uh, prides ourselves in terms of diversity and inclusion and that's not necessarily purely in terms of hiring practice, but really about how we agitate in every single conversation to ensure that as many perspectives are heard and we're sampling a diverse set of opinions and viewpoints. It's through that constructive tension and that agitation towards moving towards the right outcomes that we innovate and we stay relevant. With that as the backdrop to the answer, I leverage our tools to look at who has been participating, 
school needs to participate a bit more and then gently prod and nudge them to offer up their views and their suggestions through our tooling. And that could be through various forms. You've got to understand the audience that you're connecting with. Some people would prefer to come off mute and, and discuss. Others would prefer to stay off camera and potentially contribute through a chat window. So it's having that ability and those uh, multi-modes of engagement with your respective audience but once again, ensuring that you're as inclusive as possible through that process. So that's one way that I use it in terms of engaging with my team. <clears throat> the other one is sometimes even more, a little bit more lighthearted. We've recently just launched Mesh for Teams, which is a pure virtual environment that you can coexist with your colleagues. So whilst you're getting work done, the setting and the environment and the ambiance is completely different. There are even games that are infused in there. So it's also about having a little bit of fun while we're doing really deep and meaningful work as well. It's like a virtual world. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. And then the final piece around this is really about moving meetings forward. I often find that sometimes we end up in a discussion and we could get stuck on a particular topic. And I love delving into Copilot asking a very pointed question, which is, how can I move the meeting forward? And it offers me up some very creative suggestions on how I can ensure that we get to the outcomes that we need to within the meeting time that we have without needing it to dissolve into another session and making sure that all action items have been addressed. Wow. Uh, it's interesting to hear about your approach to integrating generative AI within Team Dynamics to boost performance. Can you delve into some of the challenges uh, this integration has presented and how you have navigated these obstacles? Mm -hmm. So the challenge for Microsoft would be the challenge that pretty much every organization uh, that adopts these technologies will undoubtedly have. <clears throat> and that's really around training and enablement. Technology cannot exist for technology's sake, right? What needs to happen is people need to be educated and there needs to be a solid change management process at hand to not only educate the users, but to have a go-back motion to ensure that their questions that they may have are being answered, that there's additional training that's being provided. Because the way that one prompts becomes critically important. And you may have seen the rise of new job titles such as prompt engineers, on, on LinkedIn and so forth. <clears throat> and it really is about that because the way that you prompt the engine, the syntax that you use, the words that you use, slight changes and variations can provide vastly different results. Right. People need to understand that and they need to be taken on that journey. And it's only through enablement and through practice and ultimately lifting their collective uh, intelligence and potential as it pertains to the technology that they're best able to leverage that. And once they've crossed that threshold, it becomes part and parcel of the way that they do work and they are less likely to revert to legacy behaviors. It's a new way of working and it's a new way of interacting with the technology that we have. Right. As you rightly said, you know, like, for example, in simple terms, if I mention it, like what you ask, what you get, right? The prompt uh, is very, very important uh, part of, uh, you know, like getting the results uh, that uh, you would like to see. Chris' insights on blending human expertise with AI offer a fascinating perspective on the future of leadership and teamwork. It's a fine line between leveraging AI's capabilities and maintaining the irreplaceable human elements of creativity and empathy. How do you see this integration playing out in your own teams or leadership style? I'm curious to know how you balance technology and human touch in your professional environments. Turning our attention to the rich tapestry of diversity, it's clear that varied backgrounds and perspectives fuel innovation in AI. Kri, your journey embodies this principle. Uh, we are keen to delve into how this diversity has shaped your approach and the broader technological landscape. Uh, reflecting on your journey from South Africa to Canada, how do you believe embracing diversity enhances innovation decision making, particularly in the AI and technology sectors? So as I had shared earlier on, Microsoft uh, prides and really encourages us in terms of diversity and inclusion from our hiring practices 
to the way that we conduct our meetings, the way that we reason over problems. Everything's really grounded in that, having as many perspectives as possible uh, within reason as we look to solve the challenges that lie before us, whatever they may be, be it human, be it technology-based, be it innovation, be it security. There's a myriad of those. <clears throat> that said, when I reflect on my own journey coming from South Africa, uh, it's arguably a smaller subsidiary, an emerging economy that faces a whole host of different challenges. The way that one would go to market, the way that one would approach our customers, uh, and often, you know, you need to do more with fewer resources, human and otherwise. I strongly believe, and I, rather I know for a fact, that Microsoft could have easily found someone with my capabilities in North America, yet they actively sought to bring me from South Africa to Canada to provide my rich rich experience grid back to the organization. And likewise, I think that I have learned too from my Canadian and North American counterparts in terms of the way that they've approached things. So it's a virtuous blend in terms of the experiences, perspectives, and approach to business that we each bring that makes us stronger as a unit. Uh, thank you, Kree, for sharing that with our audience. You know, the influence of diversity on innovation, especially in the tech sector, is undeniable from your experiences, Kree. Uh, could you share uh, an instance where diverse perspectives within your team led to a significant breakthrough or improvement on AI-driven project? A very interesting one. Uh, it doesn't necessarily relate to AI, but I think the response is still a valid one. I have done a piece of training at work called Managing Generational Diversity or Across Generational Diversity. And really it set the context for people all the way from baby boomers to millennials and Gen Z and with the understanding that you've got a mix of these people that sit within your team and your work environment. And it could be any combination of those that are around the table as you're talking around a topic or aiming to solve a problem. What was most telling in there was that it explained quite, in quite a large amount of detail how every single generation expects to be communicated with and how they prefer to communicate. Being armed with that type of intelligence and understanding and perspective allowed me to engage with the various members of my team in the manner that best suited them. And where that actually led us to was number one, a shared appreciation and understanding for what each was bringing to the table, a nullification in terms of seniority and tenure in role, and really aimed to drive us towards the outcome that we wanted to with much more speed and collaboration. Uh, thank you for uh, highlighting uh, on this important uh, subject. Kree's journey underscores the undeniable value of diversity in sparking innovation, especially in the fields like AI and technology. It's a powerful reminder that breakthroughs often come from the meeting of a diverse minds and perspectives. What steps can we take to champion diversity and inclusion within our own circles and industries? I encourage you to share your initiatives or thoughts on how we can collectively build more inclusive spaces that drive innovation. Kri, before we wrap up, uh, you know, like I would love to ask one final question uh, that I believe our listeners, especially those aspiring to make their mark in the world of technology and leadership, would find invaluable. Based on your rich experience and the journey you have shared with us today, what advice would you offer to the next generation of leaders and innovators looking to navigate the complexities of technology and business? Hmm. So there are a few things that I would say. The first one is be constantly curious. And by constantly curious, seek to empower yourself with as much information as you can from a wide and experienced grid as possible. So be that through podcasts, be that through written content, articles, blog posts, um, following you know interesting speakers. Do those things and really aim to enrich yourself every single day. Find the time and rather sacrifice entertainment in light of education. That's number one. And make that a constant practice. 
Number two, be humble in your approach. Because where you are today is not necessarily where you're going to be tomorrow. And the universe always has its own journey that's carved out for each and every one of us. <clears throat> With that, choose as many experiences as you can as opposed to roles. So do not rotate towards roles and titles, but rather think about the experiences that will, number one, enable you to bring your best self, that will infuse you, that will speak to your purpose and how you can ultimately be of service to others. You know, Satya said something quite interesting and I was chatting to someone about it yesterday. And, you know, he at no point did he ever envisage that he would end up as the commander-in-chief at Microsoft. And he said, do not wait for your next job to do your best work. Wherever you find yourself, pour yourself into it and do your best work. And I thought that that was a wonderful set of advice to give to anybody. You do your best work and invariably things will open up for you. Right. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, Kri, you know, like being humble is uh, one of the most important thing uh, any anyone can, you know, like uh, follow. Kri, I can't thank you enough for being with us today. Your insights have not only enlightened, but also inspired all of us. It's been a privilege to delve into your experiences and wisdom. Thank you for adding such incredible value to our conversation uh, and to our audience journey. Truly, it's been an honor. Thank you so much, SK. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. As we conclude this engaging episode with Kree Govinda, we extend our sincere thanks for his invaluable insights. Today, we delve into the transformative world of generative AI and its impact on small businesses, guided by Kree's extensive experience and Microsoft innovative approaches. A key takeaway from our conversation is the growing significance of AI in enhancing productivity and strategic decision making in the business realm. We are very grateful to our partners, exclusive banking partner RBC, exclusive shipping partner UPS and exclusive accounting software partner Zero. We also encourage our listeners to deepen their business acumen by subscribing to Canadian SME Small Business Magazine. For more information, please visit canadiansme.ca. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to sharing more insights in our upcoming episodes.